What's up, you guys? Welcome back again to your HeroClix headquarters. Today, we've got this awesome new Sherlock Holmes iconic set to unbox for you guys. And uh, as you can see here, we got two different Sherlocks. We got Watson. Uh, we've got Irene Adler, uh, Moriarty, and uh, the Hounds of Baskerville. So uh, you can take a look here, open this up, and you can see all the figures in there. And I just think this whole set is designed so well. Uh, you know, the box art is amazing. Looks just like his front door, basically. And uh, yeah, just um, everything about this set is really cool. So without further ado, let's get right into this. All right. So uh, we do have six figures in this set. And we have all of the cards here. And besides just figures, we do get a lot of other cool stuff this time around. So uh, we take a look at the figures here in just a moment. But first, I want to kind of open this up and uh, take a look at everything that we have here. So it's really cool. Instead of, you know, normally they give us just the cards, not really anything extra. But this time we actually get bystander tokens. So you got Moriarty's uh, henchmen that have plasticity, precision strike, toughness, and close combat expert. And then you've got an Adler disguise who uh, doesn't really have much in the way of stats or powers, but they are autonomous. So you can move them around without uh, using up your actions. And yo, yeah, so there's like a fake ones and a real one. And uh, I don't know if that coin on the other end of these guys means anything um, actually gameplay wise, but let's take a look at all the cards here. One of the things I love about this set is just, you know, look at the cards are just like the actual like book covers or something. Uh, that's really cool. And it does come with a uh, mystery card as well which is really awesome. And it's like a little different that, you know, it doesn't have just like the little case file thing. It's like its own thing. I think that's really cool. Um, and we can just take a look here. So keywords for mystery cards are always detective. Uh, and this time pass is also one of them. But for the first clue effect, you have elementary. When a friendly character with a listed keyword uses outwit to target an opposing character, after resolutions gain one clue token. So as long as they just have the keyword and they outwit somebody, you get a clue token. That's really easy, especially if you just load your team with outwit. You could get like maybe all the way to 12 in just a couple of turns. Uh, but let's see, for three, you get the suspect effect, which is friendly characters can use stealth. So once you've targeted three people with outwit, you all get stealth. That's pretty great. And then for eight, with evidence, friendly characters can use poison. So now your whole team gets poison. And then case closed at 12 uh, clue tokens. Then you have when friendly characters use poison, they deal penetrating damage. So that's a pretty cool mystery card. I think, uh, you know, that could see some play. There's some... I mean, even just getting stealth right off the bat after like three outwits is pretty great. Um, but yeah, let's take out all these figures and see what they do. All right, so let's start things off with taking a look at uh, the guy himself here, Sherlock Holmes. Taking a look at the inside of his card. And again, I just want to point out how great these cards look. Like, you know, you can tell all the attention to detail they really put in, like making it look like an actual book cover and like an actual old time kind of writing and everything like so cool so sherlock holmes has detective martial artist past police and scientist keywords he starts with a trait master of disguise which gives him shape change and then another trait if all else fails watson when sherlock holmes takes damage after resolutions you may replace him with a number three sherlock holmes on the same click number so uh oh man a 19 super senses and if that fails you and he takes damage he just turns to the other Sherlock Holmes, which is more of the fighting one. But then he has another trait here, nothing more deceptive than obvious fact. When Sherlock Holmes or a friendly character that is adjacent or has the detective keyword is targeted by an opposing character's outwit or perplex, after resolutions give a friendly mystery card a clue token. Opposing characters within four squares can't use safeguard outwit or protected outwit. Oh my goodness, that is so strong. Uh, wow. So yeah, he just has a full dial of outwit and opposing characters within four squares of him can't be safeguard or protected from outwit. That is insane. Uh, yeah. And just sitting on that 19 super senses is, is pretty good. He's also has police team ability so he can help the range attacks of your adjacent friendly characters. And he does have a six range himself so he can be 
taking some shots for sure. Yeah, I like him a lot. Uh, I love characters that can knock out opposing, uh, you know, safeguard and protected outwit. So this guy can definitely see some play just for that fact alone. And let's take a look at the uh, more fighty Sherlock Holmes here, who's got this sword cane. Gotta love that sword cane. But let's take a look at what he does. So first of all, he has detective, martial artist, past, police, and scientist keywords. Calculated strikes. At the beginning of your turn, Sherlock Holmes may roll 2d6 and note the result. If he does, the first attack roll he would make this turn uses the noted result instead of rolling. That attack can't be re-rolled or have its dice replaced. That's really cool. Um, that just makes me think to the, uh, you know, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, Sherlock Holmes movies where he like plans out his attacks and then of course hits him with the discombobulate. Uh, which is probably the incapacitate here. That is definitely the discombobulate right there. That's why he has incapacitate. You can't change my mind. But anyway, he does have another trait. The game is afoot. When Sherlock Holmes clears action tokens, you may replace him with a number two Sherlock Holmes on the same click number. So that's the one we just took a look at. Um, there's no number one in this set. I think it's just WizKids number one, number two and stuff. And I think the WizKids number one is actually King Kong. So there's not actually like an official number one. That's why it just starts at two. But anyway, that's a really cool way to, you know, switch back to the super outwit, you know, really detective Sherlock Holmes. Um, and then he has a special movement power that he gets later that gives him flurry and force blast. And when Sherlock Holmes would knock back an opposing character before knocking them back, he may place them in any square adjacent to himself. That's really cool, because that way he could knock them back in any direction he wants to, basically, uh, you know, to <clears throat> pretty much to either guarantee that they hit something and get some knockback damage, or that you just toss them back, you know, towards the rest of your team so they can finish them off. Very, very cool. Um, and, you know, he's going to have like a 12 attack potentially with Prob when he's got that flurry special. So that's really awesome. I like that a lot. I think both of these Sherlock's are great. And um, now one thing I want to look at here after resolutions, you may replace him. So, yeah, if you're replacing, he's going to have to be on the sideline. So he, you're going to have to um, use up a sideline spot if you want to have them swap between each other, which normally that's not too bad, but I will say there's kind of a downside that, uh, you know, detectives have so much stuff you can put on the sideline for them. Um, and you know, when you include all the mystery cards specifically, so you might be using a lot of sideline options just on your, uh, mystery cards, especially with this one being able to add clue tokens more easily. You might want to like play more mystery cards. So that's the only kind of downside is that you're going to have a hard time narrowing down your sideline, I would say. Uh, but next up we have Dr. Watson. So let's take a look at him here. So he has the detective, past, scientist, and soldier keywords. And he starts with a trait, the whetstone to Sherlock's mind, which gives him free, choose an adjacent friendly character. If that character can use that wit, they may use it an additional time this turn. Very cool. Uh, so that's going to be really good with Sherlock. Of course, the first one has uh, full dial outwit and turns off protected and a safeguard outwit on opposing characters. Um, that means he can double outwit them, which is just nuts. Um, and even just to throw this guy on any detective team, you know, giving somebody a second outwit is great. But yeah, just some sidestep and willpower to help keep him moving around. He's a team player. He's a wild card. He can copy other team abilities. But his other trait here, publisher of Holmes Adventures. For all characters with this trait, when a clue token is placed on a friendly mystery card after resolutions, you may heal a friendly character with a detective keyword one click. So that's nice to get a little extra healing every time you put a clue token on a mystery card. And then former army doctor, range combat expert, and support is what he starts with. Uh, so that's actually pretty great. He'll, he already has an 11 attack for 3 damage, so he'll be 12 for 4 shooting. That's pretty nuts. And then he can support to heal people up. So uh, he gets you a lot of healing on a detective team with, um, you know, some mystery cards because you're getting to heal every time you put a clue token on something. Plus, he has support himself so he can heal up the team and he gets you an extra outwit. It would kind of be better if he just had his own outwit, <laughs> but giving somebody else that can already use outwit a second outwit is, you know, almost as good and actually really interesting for, you know, him being kind of like his sidekick. But next up, let's take a look at Irene Adler here. And uh, she's got a lot going on. So... 
First of all, she has celebrity, detective, and past keywords. She has a trait, disguised to fool Sherlock, which is a power action to generate three Adler disguised bystanders, and then place Irene Adler on her card. At the beginning of your next turn, if Irene Adler is on her card, remove these bystanders from the game and place Irene Adler in a square one of them last occupied. When Irene Adler generates Adler disguised bystanders, exactly one must have the real printed on its back. So, you know, like we saw earlier, two of them are fake, one of them is real. Um, let's see, she just has some in cap, you know, not too crazy of a dial there, stats-wise. 50 points, she's a team player. But let's look over at her defense power, which gives her mastermind. And once per game, when she uses it, she may instead choose an adjacent opposing character, regardless of point value or keywords. Wow. So you just want to run her up in the fight and say, hit me, and uh, make them hurt themselves. That is pretty insane for 50 points. And she has a special damage power that gives her outwit and probability control. And Irene Adler can use both when on her card as if she occupied the square of one of her Irene Adler disguised bystanders. That is actually insane. So you can run those bystanders around. Um, they are all autonomous, so they're not going to use actions. They just run around, position them wherever you need them. She can outwit and prob stuff as needed. And then all of her bystanders have this trait, trained as an actress. When Adler Disguise is KO'd, reveal its back. If real is printed on it, uh, after resolutions, place Irene Adler in this square this bystander last occupied, deal her one unavoidable damage, and remove all of her other Adler Disguise bystanders from the game, protected pulse wave. So that's the uh, you know reason you need one of the real ones, basically. The, uh, your opponent can still choose to kind of punch them or shoot them and try to get them out of the way. And if they hit the real one, she will take that one unavoidable damage and, you know, you'll get rid of all the rest of the bystanders. It's cool to note there, though, that she is still the one using her outwit and stuff. So if she outwitted something and they killed the bystander that used the outwit, it would still be outwitted because she was the one that used the outwit, you know, not the bystander. So that's kind of neat and, you know, kind of important to keep in mind there. Uh, next up, we'll have a look here at Professor Moriarty. He has detective, past, and scientist keywords. Underworld network trait says leadership. When Professor Moriarty uses it and succeeds after resolutions, he may generate a Moriarty henchman bystander within range. And he does have a four range, so that's pretty cool. He can just pop them out up to four scores away, and then they have, you know, precision strike close combat expert to be making some attacks with. Uh, and his next trait here, accidents happen to those in his way. Power, choose an opposing character with one or more action tokens and deal them one unavoidable damage. If that character isn't KO'd, heal them one click. So I have seen some people talking about comboing this guy with the new um, Elsa Bloodstone from Next Phase, who says other characters can't heal because uh, this guy would just deal them one unavoidable and then they wouldn't be able to heal. That does seem like a pretty nasty combo, so, you know, be wary of that, I would say. Uh, but then he has a damage power that gives him outwit, perplex, and protected outwit, which is pretty awesome, but don't forget, our uh, Sherlock Holmes can get rid of that protected outwit and still be able to outwit his outwit, so I think that's really funny. Um, but yeah, otherwise, some stealth, TK, and mastermind... And he's only 45 points, but he does have the uh, Underworld team ability, as do his henchmen. Now, it has been pointed out that the henchmen don't have any keywords listed here, so um, they're going to have to errata them to give them, like, past or something so that he'll be able to carry his henchmen and they'll be able to carry each other, hopefully. Basically, because the Underworld team ability is keyword-based, it gives you Passenger 1, but only to carry a character that shares a keyword, and Passenger 2 only to carry characters that share a keyword that are lower at points. So um, they are going to have to give the bystander a keyword to be able to use that team ability effectively. But I mean, overall, I think this dude is pretty great still. For only 45 points, you're getting some good utility with, you know, the outwit and the uh, TK and leadership and being able to spawn little minion dudes and get some free damage in. And, you know, now that we can see cards, we can see if somebody's on their last click and he can just, boom, pop them for an unavoidable damage. Or, you know, like I said, combo him with Elsa Bloodstone so they can't heal it back. Um, so, yeah, pretty great set overall so far. And last but not least, we'll have a quick look here at the Hounds of Baskerville. 
So they have animal, monster, mystical, and past keywords. They have traded stealth to start out with, which is great. And then their other trait here, stalking generations of Baskervilles. Uh, once per game when Hound of Baskervilles would be KO'd, instead turn it to click number eight and roll a d6 and heal them equal to half the result, protected pulse wave. Uh, coming in at 50 points. They just got a pretty long dial of charge, blades, combat reflexes, shape change, into some flurry and steel energy to heal them up. And battle fury, of course, as well, and a little toughness there. So uh, a pretty beefy dial there. And then, of course, they have that once per game when they would be KO'd to uh, heal them. So yeah, they're very beefy for 50 points. They can, they can absorb a lot of damage. Uh, so yeah, pretty great set overall. I like it a lot. This is easily one of my favorite iconic sets so far. You know, Sherlock Holmes has always been a really cool character and uh, detectives are a really fun team to play. And the detective keyword in general is really good right now. There's a lot of really good detectives. Thanks mainly to the Batman team up set. And now this, we have some really awesome detectives to work with. But yeah, you guys, let me know all your thoughts about this set in the comments below and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to smash the like button and click the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos but if you'd like to help support the channel even more you can also check the links in the description for the patreon or hit the join button down there for the youtube memberships either way for as little as one dollar a month you get entered into the monthly giveaways and you get to see your name here in the credits with all these other awesome people so if that interests you make sure to check that out but that's going to do it for this one you guys thanks again so much for watching till next time this has been heroclix headquarters signing off